Good morning, Year 6. It's Wednesday the 24th of February. And um, today we're going to have a look at the next part of our maths. Okay, we're going to start on Wednesday by adding and subtracting fractions. And then we're going to continue with adding and subtracting fractions on Thursday. So hopefully you're feeling quite confident because remember we've done all of this before. It's just recapping and revisiting. And if you are feeling confident, that is just what we want. Okay, we want you to be confident, we want you to be happy, we want you to be ready to come back to school, feeling that you are ready and raring to go. So don't worry if you've been finding it a little bit easy, that was our intention. Okay, so have a watch of the White Rose video first. Okay, and remember, whatever you do to the denominator, you've got to do to the numerator. So after watching the video, uh, we're going to have a look at this problem here. And Mo, he spends three-fifths of his pocket money on a present for his sister. What a kind young man. Okay. He then gives two-fifteenths of his pocket money to charity. What fraction of his pocket money does he have left? You may use a fraction strip to help you now. You will have seen fraction strips in the video. What you need to do is convert these into a common denominator so that you can add them up. Then, once you've added them up, you can take them away from the whole. Now, the whole, if we've got 15 there's a clue to your common denominator. If you've got 15 then your whole is going to be 15 15 okay? So convert his pocket money into 15 I'll tell you that one. Okay, so three-fifths needs to convert into 15 You should be able to do that by now, okay? Then add on the two fifteens that he also gives to charity. What's your total? And then how much has he got left if he started with 15 fifteens? Have a go, okay? If you're going to use a fraction strip, you need to have 15 boxes in your strip to start with, because that's your whole, okay? So. Hope you had a go at that one. Remember to have a look at the answer presentation for Mo's answer. On the last slide, you should have used the lowest common denominator to find your common denominator, lowest common multiple, lowest common multiple to find your common denominator. Okay, that's something that's coming up every day, year six. Okay, Whitney is calculating five eighths at three sixteenths. She finds the lowest common multiple of eight and sixteen to find the lowest common denominator. Perfect. Okay. And she works out that the lowest common multiple is actually 16. Okay. So three sixteens can stay as it is. She just needs to convert her five eighths. Five eighths equals, oh, what's happened to that eight to get to 16? It's doubled. So double my five, you get to 10. Next to it, 10 sixteens add the three sixteens equals 13 sixteenths. She's added her fractions. So I'd like to use Whitney's method of finding the lowest common multiple to get your common denominator and then adding them together. Okay. Now, let me tell you that these questions here, they're what I would call easy ones because you only have to change one of the fractions in the question. Okay. There you go. Now, sort the calculations into the correct part of the table. So we've got answers with less than one and then answers that are greater than one. Now, how are we going to know if it's greater or less than one? Well, for example, if you've got fifths and you've got six fifths as your answer, you know that that is an improper fraction. Therefore, it's greater than one whole group of fifths because you've got six of them, five, which is one whole, and then you've got one left over. So your answer would be one and one fifth. So that's greater than one. Less than one, for example, if you had four fifths, you've not quite got enough. So what I'd like you to do is have a go. You need to find your common denominators. So you're going to have to convert one of the fractions or both of the fractions, okay? and then you can find your answer. But look, some of them are addition, some of them are subtraction. Off 
you go. This problem here, number three, a jug is filled with nine tenths of a liter of juice. It's not quite full. Three fiftieths of a liter of juice is poured into a glass. Three fiftieths. Seven hundredths of a liter of juice is poured into another glass. How much is left in the jug? Now, this one is a little bit more complicated. Why? Because it's in a problem, it's in a context, it's got lots of words in it. And you know that the first thing you should do is get your pencil and circle the important bits of information. So I'm going to circle nine tenths, three fiftieths and seven hundredths. Okay. My hole that I'm starting with is nine tenths. Okay. So I'm starting with nine tenths. But this is fiftieths and this is hundredths. Now I can see that fiftieths can go into hundredths by times in that by two, but also my tenths can go into hundredths by times in this by 10. So I'm going to use hundredths. So 10 times 10 is a hundred. So nine times 10 is 90. So it's 90 hundredths I'm starting with. How much do I take away if I take away my three fiftieths, but that will be hundredths, I'll let you decide. And then take away my seven hundredths, how much is left in the jug? So I've given you a really big clue there. You need to convert it to hundredths. Okay, but I've not quite done it all for you. Okay. Once you've done that, have a look at the answers on the answer sheet presentation and that will help you. Okay. Uh, moving on, we've got some more problems. Mr. and Mrs. Rolls are knitting scarves. Mr. Rolls scarf is five ninths of a meter long, five ninths of a meter. Mrs. Rolls's scarf is, is one fifth of a meter long. Oh, wrong. Read it properly, Mr. Hampson. Mrs. Rose's scarf is one fifth of a meter longer than Mr. Rose. So how long is Mrs. Rose's scarf? Well, I know there then, Mr. Rose's is five ninths. Mrs. Rose is an extra one fifth. So I need to add those together, but I've got ninths and fifths, can't add them. Find the common denominator, okay? How do you find the common denominator? You find your yes, lowest common multiple, okay? How long are both scarves all together? Well, once you've found Mrs. Rose's scarf and you found Mr. and you know Mr. Rose's scarf, you can just add them all together, okay? Um, these ones here, Ron and Eva are working out one quarter at five sixths. Ron's method is one quarter at five sixths equals Three twelfths add ten twelfths equals thirteen twelfths. Okay, so he's converted to twelfths. Eva's method was one quarter at five six equals six twenty fourths add twenty twenty fourths equals twenty six twenty fourths. Okay, what is the same about their methods? Well. What have they both done? What is different about their methods? That's pretty obvious. Which one do you prefer and why? Okay, have a look at what they've done. Now I'm just looking at their answers, 13 twelfths and 26 24ths. If I double my twelfths to get to 24ths and I double my top 13, double is 26. I know that they're actually the same answer, they're equal. It's just that this is 12 and that's 24. So they've actually got the same answer. They've just done it a different way. But which way was the most efficient way? Remember, in math, it's all about doing things the most efficient way. So that was all of your work for Wednesday. Please have a look at the answers and mark your learning. Okay. It takes me longer to make the answers than to plan the lessons. Okay, just like you are doing them. I've done the lessons too. All the answers are there. Please let me know if you find a mistake. We all make mistakes. Um, I'm not sure if there is one, there shouldn't be one. I have checked it, but if you do find one, let me know. Um, but use it to mark your learning, okay? It's really important. All right, enjoy today's lesson and I look forward to seeing it when you email it in.
Bye-bye.